You want to go from the top um, to the bottom or bottom to top, man? Talk to me. I'm going to go. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go right at the top. <laughs> um, I'm going to go right to the top. <clears throat> I want to say one thing, and I want to make sure that it's very clear. TJ Dillashaw answered every questions of whether he needed performance enhancing drugs or not. He fucking fought his ass off. And I was going to say this, whether he lost tonight, because it was a close fight. Yeah. Whether he won or lost. The guy is a fucking dog. Yeah. He is someone that can't. I was, I was honestly, think about all that here. I'm not even going to put it in perspective like, oh, this is just another fight. No, two and a half years off. All the pressure of proving to people that he was not, that he didn't need them. But he did anyways, but he didn't need them. He needed to prove everyone wrong that he was, he was as good as he should have been. I do think the timing was off a little bit on it. He, I thought when he left the sport. He was more on point, more on like you know. He was winging he was some more shots. I know, of course. Yeah, he was more difficult to hit. He seemed like he was comfortable with just throwing the ones and the twos, whereas before he would mix it up with a little bit more of the kicks. I also think too, after the first round, you could tell he was limping back to his corner after the first round when they went right before they went to commercial. He was limping back to his corner, and I didn't hear what, what they said between rounds. But I knew something was wrong with his knee. Before they even came back after for the second round, he had a shitty second round. But and I even saw some fighters like Eddie Alvarez goes, if if TJ's corner was smart, they'd stop this fight. No, and he, I mean, yes, I was I was surprised to see Eddie hmm. put that out there, Eddie Alvarez. But I mean, he fought his ass off in that third round. I had him losing the second, obviously. Yeah, he won the first, lost the second, lost it. Could have potentially been a ten eight. I don't think it was, but he could have potentially been a ten eight. Um, and then going in, the reason why I bring that 10-8 is because we're going to talk about something later on in the 10-8 division. Okay, but the, the second, the third round was close, but I gave it to TJ, and then I thought Corey won the fourth. It was 2-2 going into the fifth. That's the way I, I had the judging on. I thought the judging going in, in, um, into that fight was scaring the shit out of me. So as that fight started going on, I started wondering, like, shit, I don't know how this could be a, this could be 4-1 to Corey. You know, I, I didn't know. But I thought TJ did, he answered all the critics. He did everything he needed to, and I'm, I'm, I, like I said, I'm splitting straws and splitting hairs when I say he was a tad bit off, but two and a half years. I wouldn't call it ring rust. It was just the fight timing. It wasn't the same as it it's was a, before he left, which is also, calm, which is a, also the range of, of Corey calm. Sanhagen yeah, coming back and well. fighting a guy that's that long for the division. You know, he's tall at 5'11". He's got a huge, you know, reach. That's hard to get inside, and so that takes – that timing and that that ability to slide yourself into position at the right time, that's not easy to have. Well, you have to also take into consideration his movement stopped after the first round. In that second round, he just started walking after him instead of like pressuring him and moving his hands and switching his stance as much. He stopped in that second round. And then that's what led to the cut because he got hit with that clean shot. Then after that, I'm telling you, it is a, it changes the way you fight a fight with a cut like that with blood dripping in your eye. You're all foggy on one side, probably clear a little bit on the other. I mean, he was working through a lot of stuff going into that third round, and he came out and won the third round. That says a lot about him as a fighter, his mentality, his 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 fortitude to get through that. I was honestly, I was extremely impressed by TJ Dillashaw tonight. Yeah, let's give a uh, the. Uh ringside physician for nevada that let that fight go because when you get the up and downs doctors are quick to stop fights they mm -hmm. cross multiple muscular structures and it's a problem because it can go down into your tear duct there's all kinds of things that can happen they do not like those the ones that go in the horizontal they're okay with vertical ones not good and that i loved at the end of the fight you know tj said yeah you know just you know same one that i you know i opened up in uh you know practice before nope <laughs> that's a different one you didn't get to see it when you look in the mirror you're gonna go oh yeah. shit you know that that was a completely different cut but it was really a good job of just maintaining it you know checking it and letting a guy fight through it you know this is what you have to do and when it, when a guy's young in his career and you're gonna hear all kinds of people say i'm wrong because you know no one should be when you have someone that's really young in their career Sometimes you'll stop those because you don't want them to receive a lot of damage and it's the loss is not going to be the end of the world where the, the, the cut can end up getting hit and really cause the guy a lot of problems later on in his career. But when you get someone, you know, with the experience of a TJ Dillashaw and all of the, you know, things he's done and the level that this fight is, it's good to see a ringside physician say, I'm going to let this go. 
If it gets worse, maybe I'll stop it, but I'm going to let it go. And they did a great job with that cut. So I thought it was a, I had the same thing. I had it going into the, the fifth round. I had it even. I thought TJ had a couple of good rounds. I thought Corey had that second round was really a heavy round. Um, the fourth round I had going to Corey and then going into the fifth, it was a matter of who was going to get the fight. And the judges gave it to uh, TJ, you know, one giving it to Corey, two giving it to TJ in a split decision. I I had Corey win in the last round, but it's a matter of just, you know, who you thought was landing the cleaner shots. And he landed a couple of heavy shots, you know. There were some things that happened in there that I thought he landed the better ones, but I, I really give it to TJ. The leg kicks that he threw throughout the fight, really effective. Did a great job with those. Yeah, I'm surprised he got away from those. Um, like, I think in the fourth round, he kind of got away from them. He was landing them clean, I think, in the third. Then he got away from them in the fourth, and that's when Corey was able to steal that round. And then he, he kind of went back to him early in the fifth, but then got away from him throughout the fifth, the rest of the fifth and the round. So yeah, I thought TJ was the, the winning that, that we, the start of that fourth round. TJ was winning that fourth yeah. round first, almost he the was. first half, and then just kind of, I don't know what it was, if he got tired or what it was, but everything changed in that moment, yeah. and that's when Corey took it over. Yeah, I'm not like. Here's the thing: is I could see how you thought maybe Corey won, and I could see how like you know other people thought that TJ won. Yeah. I thought it was a close round. I would I would hate to have been a judge in that fifth round because it was two two going in there. It was close. It really depends also on how you look at that second round. I thought it had the potential of being a ten eight round. Um, it was close, but not. I I, I like if if a judge had said a ten eight, I would have said ah maybe you know. But then you've been, you've been listening to Michael Bisping. No, uh, no, that's tutorial not doing, on ten eight judging now. <laughs> no, but I mean, he, he rocked him. He cut him. He rocked him. Um, you know, I looked at, I looked at the way that Corey was able to touch him and piece him up. And then, like I said, but TJ also was not the same fighter going in the second because of his knee. You could tell the movement was gone. If you look at the first round, you look yeah. at the second round, the was, movement was pretty much gone. Yep. You know. Um. But look, I really Corey Sanhagen's tough as hell. I mean, it could have went either way. He he obviously belongs in that in that category of number two and number three position. So I, I want to see where he's going to end up after this. But he's right. He's he's. I'd like to see him get a title shot. You know, I think this is kind of one of those fights. Like, damn, it sucks because we had talked about this yep. uh, in the in our midweek show that he. I felt like he shouldn't have taken the fight. He should have just said, you know, hey, you've been away. You know, you fight somebody else. I've earned my way to be here to be ne- to be next in line. And uh, and he took the he took the fight, so I tip my hat to him for, do, I love for taking the, fact the fight. He took it. <clears throat> yeah, he took it. So um, I think TJ answered a lot of the critics tonight. You know, he answered he answered the bell, and he, like I said, if I'm going to say anything about it in terms of negativity, I would just say that I felt like his timing was a little bit off, and it wasn't even so much the timing, like you said. San Hagen is 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 long. His, he knows how to use that range. He's really good at slipping in and out of the pocket and making you miss, and then countering very well. He had a lot of success doing that. Um, but the other thing as well is that for me, when I go back and watch some of TJ's old fights, it was always it was always one two and maybe inside leg kick or one two or you know right hand left hook or whatever it is finished with a head kick. It was something off of that, not just the one two and just lunge in for the body lock. And so I think he's got to get a little bit of that back. It's going to take a little bit of time. I know he's been training, but nothing is different than training in or from training to fighting. It doesn't matter what you do in training. When you get in that fight, it's a completely different person that you're not used to working with. And so he, he just looked like he was off just a tiny bit when it came to his combinations. But that's stuff that he's just going to fix with be getting, getting, more, getting in the cage more often. Yeah. So I'm glad to see him back. I'm glad that he was able to... Uh, Pretty much silence everyone, and he had a good performance. Like we said, his technique is there. That was never – we never said anything about him not – he's always been a, a he's always been a really good fighter. He's always been a great fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he just answered all the questions tonight. Good stuff.